If you love working digitally, but sometimes you wish your work didn't have that perfect all straight lines kind of look and looked a little bit more organic and hand-drawn, keep watching because this is the tutorial for you. In today's video, I'm gonna show you three different techniques in Adobe Illustrator for giving your work, such as your text or your logos or even your graphics, a more hand-drawn feel. Let's take a look. All right, so for technique number one, we're gonna use a tool that most people probably haven't heard of. It's called the wrinkle tool. And this is a great one if you want a lot of precise control over exactly where you want your rough edges. So maybe you might not want the rough edges all over your piece, or maybe you want them to be a little bit more distorted in some areas. That's where this tool comes in handy. Now, the downside to this tool is that it only works with objects, meaning you can't use this on live text. So that is the big drawback to it. So let me show you how this works. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my text here. You can see it's live text right now. So in order to do this, I'm gonna right click on it and I'm going to head to create outlines and that will turn it from a live text into basically a series of shapes. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm gonna head over to the toolbar here. I'm gonna select this wrinkle tool. Now, if you don't see this, um, you might, if you click and hold on this, you might see that this is actually set on one of these other tools, in which case, you know, just click, hold and select the wrinkle tool. If you don't see it at all here, uh, then you will need to head down to these three dots down here and look for it. Uh, it should be right here under modify. So if it's not showing up, just click and drag this into your toolbar and then you can select it that way. All right, so with the wrinkle tool selected, uh, all you really need to do is start kind of click and drag and go over your outlines and you'll see that it basically starts to just distort and roughen up those edges. Now, if you wanna tweak this a little further, what you can actually do is double click on the wrinkle tool icon here and you can modify these parameters. So the things you're gonna to wanna to play with are number one, the intensity, also the brush. If your brush is way too big, you know, let me show you like, you know, if you have this massive brush, uh, that might be kind of tricky to work with. Oops, let me just lock this background here real quick. Um, so if you wanna just work on very small parts at a time, make sure to set your brush to something smaller. Uh, in this case, I think 100, it seems pretty good. I believe you can also hold option. That's right, yeah, if you hold option, you can click and drag uh, to change the shape of your brush. Or if you hold option and control, you can also, option and shift, sorry. <laughs> if you hold option and shift, you can also change the size. So let's make that a perfectly round shape again and hold option shift to change the size, make it smaller, whoops. All right, uh, the main thing you're gonna wanna play around with though is the intensity as well as the detail and complexity. So the intensity will affect basically how fast this effect starts to happen. Uh, so I'm gonna just bump this down to 10%. The complexity will basically set how many ridges and grooves and points uh, and basically how many details are gonna appear in the shapes around here, um, as will the detail. So let's try bumping these up a little bit and see the difference that makes. I'm gonna hit uh, Command Z to undo this. And let's try this now. All right, so straight away you can see this has now created a whole bunch more anchor points than before. Uh, and the grooves don't come as far into the shape, but they're a lot, you know, there's a lot more of them. So depending on the type of effect you want, uh, basically just play around with this. Let's try moving this down a little bit. Um, let's bump the intensity up and let's see how that compares. Oh, so you wanna make sure you have, oops, sorry. So you wanna make sure you have clicked your object, make sure it's selected, and then start roughening up the edges with it. Let's see how that looks. All right, that's pretty cool. So like I said, uh, basically just play around with the intensity to change you know, how intense this effect will appear and the complexity. And then you can basically just go over your entire shape. Let's make sure that's selected again and roughen up the edges that way. So that's technique number one. Again, very cool if you want control, precise control. Let's say you want to adjust to affect one part of a letter or one part of your logo or, you know, one specific area of your illustration. This would be a great tool to go. But again, like I said, it can only be used on expanded objects, meaning you can't use it on live type, which is why it's not my favorite tool. So I'm gonna show you a better way of doing this. This is my preferred way when I'm working with text at least, because this is all a live effect. So I'm gonna click this text here. You can see it's live text at this point. And then I'm gonna head to the appearance panel this time, which if it's not showing up for you, just head up to window and select appearance. 
uh, I'm then going to click this little FX button here and head to Distort and Transform and select Roughen. So Roughen will basically have a similar effect to the Wrinkle tool, but it's gonna apply it automatically to your entire object, to everything you have selected. So what I like to do when making, when going for a hand-drawn look is I like to change the points to smooth. You can just see um, here if I increase the size, you might see this more. Smooth will basically just, I guess you can't really see it until I zoom in, but it'll make those corners less jagged and more smooth as the name suggests. What I like to do though, is I like to put this way down uh, you can either select relative, which will work in terms of percentages. I prefer using absolute, which will basically work in terms of pixels. So like how many pixels would you like the uh, distortion to come in or out of your shape? So I like to have this on a fairly low number and then bump the detail fairly low as well. Um, let's see. If you have the super low, it's kind of like a almost like a Halloween kind of liquidy effect. Let's push, push this up just a tiny bit more and actually maybe make the size even smaller. There we go. That's a pretty cool effect, I think. So as you can see, it's not only a faster way, uh, if I change this text, you'll see that everything, this effect is automatically applied to uh, the text as you change it. So that's a very cool thing about this effect. So that's two effects, number three. This third one's a little bit different because this one doesn't just affect the look of the edges, but actually changes the insides of your shapes as well. So let me show you what I mean. For this one, uh, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna head to the appearance panel and select this effects um, button down here. And by the way, I wanted to show you this method with the appearance panel because uh, using the appearance panel, you can then also, if you wanna change the effect later on, you can select the object and you'll see that this roughen effect is up here. If you click it, you can always go back to change this later on. So, so that's just a very good thing to know. If you don't wanna actually head up here to add it, you can also just select your object, head up to effect and apply it from there. And the same thing's gonna happen um, if I affect uh, distort transform, roughen. If I apply this here and then I'm gonna deselect it and click it again, you're gonna see it's gonna appear in the appearance panel here as well. So whether you add the effect from down here or from up here, it doesn't really make a difference, just personal preference. So I'm gonna hit Command Unz to undo that. Command Unz, <laughs> Command Z to undo that. Uh, then I'm gonna select this text again. I'm gonna head to the effects button. And this time I'm gonna head to stylize and scribble. So this is a pretty cool little effect in Illustrator. I'm gonna be honest, I don't use it a whole lot. I don't have a lot of uses for it, but it's really cool knowing that it's there if you wanna make your text just look a little bit like a hand-drawn scribble, really. Uh, and what I like about it is there's a whole bunch of settings here that you can play with. So if you want your text to look childlike or dense, um, if you want your text to have a, you know, th those rough edges that I was showing you before, uh, the best option for that is selecting sharp um, as you'll see, compared to some of the others, Sharp just really gives you that solid fill, but it just roughens up the edges. You might see um, that on the inside, you know, you can see it's basically converting the shape into a whole bunch of lines here. So there might be points where you actually get these little lines through it. Uh, if you want to change that, there are some parameters you can play with also. Again, just click on the scribble effect here in the appearance panel. Now the ones that you'll wanna play with are number one, the uh, stroke width. So, you know, obviously the higher this number, the thicker the width of each of those strokes. So if you want the kind of back, if you want the background to show through a little bit, have a very small thin width. Uh, if you want it to be more of a solid fill, bump that up. The other thing that you wanna play with is these two settings down here. I mean, you can play with all of these, they'll all give you different effects, but uh, specifically if you want kind of a solid fill and just rough edges, you wanna make this as tight as possible. So put the tightness all the way down, and then you'll see when you zoom in, you're not gonna get those lines because basically it's just decreasing the space between all the lines, so there's nothing uh, poking through. So that's a kind of more of a grainy, like a ripped paper kind of look to your text. Uh, or again, if you do want some lines in between, more of a scribbled look, then increase that spacing there. So there you go, just like that, 
three different effects. All of them have their pros and cons. They look slightly different. Again, some of them are live. They'll affect your entire illustration, whereas you know, using the wrinkle tool, you can affect just parts of it. So different situations, you'll want to use different effects. So I hope you found this useful. If you did, please let me know in the comments below. And if you want to keep leveling up either your design skills or your illustrator skills, make sure to hit subscribe and check out this playlist. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.